Good morning, everyone. My name is Caroline, and I'm glad to welcome you all this morning to our time of shared prayer and reflection. In today's gospel, we are challenged to be generous as God is generous. This is not always an easy task, and in our humanity, we are vulnerable to jealousy, resentment, hoarding and self-righteousness about who is deserving and who is not. It is a passage which names all of these responses and calls us to something different. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we come before you today, bringing with us our vulnerable hearts and our expectations. All the ways we have loved as you love us, and all the ways we have not. We thank you that this day is a new day, full of the possibility of new beginnings and grace. The grace that brings with it undeserved gifting from a generous God. A God who will have no part in a culture of striving and earning. Our God, who sees our need and meets it and asks us to do the same. Today, I'd like to invite you to enter into the Gospel passage. And while you listen, to ask yourself two questions. Who do I most identify with? And what feelings arise as I listen? A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour and again at the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then. At about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more men standing around, and he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, Call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner, saying, The men who came last have only one hour and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered one of them, saying, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why should you be envious, because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Many things have been written about this parable by people who have spent many hours pondering the meaning in the words we know so well. I am not sure what my voice can add to that which is already so well researched and prayed about. And yet... Each of us will have a response to this passage, me included. What can I learn then from my response? My initial thoughts, the feelings that arise, are indignation and resentment. I have been raised in an individualist culture, a culture that tells me if I work hard, I will achieve more. A simple equation of work and effort in for reward out. My initial and intuitive responses, that's not fair. The workers who worked all day should be paid more. By the hour, maybe would be fairer. 
and it would be, but that is not the full point of this passage. I was once stranded on the side of the road in February. My car had broken down and I had three children under 10 with me. The youngest had fallen asleep in the car in only his vest, and it was in the days before I routinely carried a mobile phone. I wrapped the practically naked baby in a picnic blanket that just happened to be in the car and set off walking down the side of the dual carriageway to the emergency phone, leaving the other two to look after each other. Walking down the side of that road in the rain in February was not my finest parenting moment. Upon reaching the emergency phone, a car pulled up next to me and a lady got out, gave me her coat and her umbrella and drove away. She did it quickly, without fuss, and without leaving any contact details for me to return her things. It was a spontaneous act of generosity. She met my need in the moment in a way that still brings tears to my eyes 21 years later. I did not earn that coat, did not pay for it, and could not return it. The coat was better quality than anything I owned at the time, and in that moment I really needed it. The lady had no need to stop. Her response may also have been one of indignation and judgment. She should have been more organised. Why is she out in the cold with a barely dressed baby? Bad parent, even? But she did not. She was moved with compassion and she acted. The owner of the vineyard saw the need of the workers who were without work and acted to meet the need. The need for meaningful work, the need for opportunity, the need to do something useful with time, the need to be part of something bigger than oneself, and yes, the wages, the need for money, so we can care for ourselves and those we love. God sees our need in the way the owner of the vineyard saw the need of the workers, and he is filled with compassion and moves to meet the need. In the same way the workers could not repay the vineyard owner for his generosity. I could not repay the lady. I have no idea who she was. I can't even remember what she looked like. But I have never forgotten that moment of generosity. It impacts me. Several years later, in an almost identical incident, I was the woman in the car and was able to stop and offer the very same coat that just happened to be in the car, to another lady with a baby, stranded on the side of the road. I'm reminded of the words of Henri Nouin in his book, The Prodigal Son. Can we become the father? Can we allow ourselves to be moved with compassion and see the need, rather than feel the sting of injustice? Can we act in generosity, rather than becoming indignant, about the unearned grace of others. That's not to say we can meet every need. There is need everywhere, far more than any one of us can hope to meet. But maybe I can work on my own indignation when others are met with generosity and I must work to meet my own needs. Maybe I can allow myself to be moved with compassion and act with grace just a little more often. And so we pray for eyes to see and ears to hear the need and for the grace to respond with compassion. We ask for forgiveness for the times we have not met a situation with grace and generosity, that we can embrace our humanity in this and be moved with compassion for ourselves. We ask for discernment so that our generosity does not become all-consuming and spill over into doing work that is not ours to do. We pray for those who desperately need someone to just notice today, to notice their need of work or connection or meaning or even acknowledgement that they exist. We offer you the times when there has been a failure of compassion, when our need has been missed by those that love us and we become resentful, and the times when we have been blind to the needs of those we love, either deliberately or by simply not noticing. And we pray that today there would be opportunities to love 
and be generous in many small ways. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.